and welcome. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to work with blocks. The blocks function in Reason version 5 and Record version 1.5 makes it possible to work with songs in a more pattern-based fashion, like in traditional hardware sequencers. This song has its clips laid out in a linear fashion in the arrangement, just like we're used to from previous versions of Reason and Record. When we arrange our song in a linear fashion, we can copy and paste clips to build up our arrangement. As you can hear, the song begins with only drums and bass, and then gradually builds up with more and more tracks. Now, let's see how we can easily accomplish the same thing using the blocks function. Let's keep only the bars of our song where all tracks play back together. Let's move these clips to a block instead and see what we can do. Now, let's switch on the blocks function on the transport panel. As you can see, we get a block automation track at the top in the sequencer. The sequencer toolbar also gets two additional buttons the Song View and the Block View buttons. Click the Block button to enter the Block View. Now, the sequencer switches views to show the contents of Block 1, which is empty at the moment. At the top, we can see the block name and its default color. If you like, you can change the block name and color. The Arrangement pane is also colored according to the block color. Let's paste our clips at the beginning of this block. Now, we've moved our song clips into Block 1. Recording and editing is done in exactly the same way in Blocks view as in the regular Song view. One important thing to remember when working in the Blocks view is that the end marker defines the total length of the block. Let's move the end marker to the end of these clips. Now the block length is 4 bars. Next. Let's see how we can use this single block to create a complete intro similar to the linear intro we started off with. We switch back to Song View to begin arranging our song. When we're going to use blocks in our arrangement, we have to create block automation clips. These clips are similar to pattern clips and define which block plays back when and for how long. Select the pencil tool and select the desired block from the list. You can have up to 32 completely different blocks in a song. In this example, we're only using one single block, but you can do plenty with only one block, as you'll soon see. Draw a block automation clip on the blocks track. You can see that the content of block 1 is also displayed in a ghosted fashion on the arrangement pane. Now, if I resize the block automation clip and make it longer than the original block length, the content in the block is repeated like this. These vertical lines show where the block is repeated. Let's keep the block automation clip the same length as the original block, 4 bars. Now, let's duplicate the block automation clip a couple of times. I'll soon explain why. Now, we have 4 block automation clips. Each clip will play back the contents of block 1, one time each. I could have created one single 16-bar block automation clip and got the same result. However, there's a reason why I didn't. The Mute Lane function. Select the Mute tool from the toolbar and click on the grayed out lanes to mute individual lanes of each block automation clip. Since mutes affect the entire lanes of each block automation clip, I use several shorter block automation clips instead of a single longer one to restrict the mutes. By muting individual lanes like this, I can easily create a complete song intro out of a single block. To create variations in the song, I can have regular song clips on top of the block clips, overriding the block content wherever I want.
Finally, when I'm happy with my arrangement, I could use the Convert Block Automation to Song Clips function to automatically generate linear song clips out of all the block clips in the song. So there's a basic overview of how you can work with blocks in Reason and Record.